be the perfect chord progression. D, A, B minor, F sharp minor, G, D, G, A. I'll write that down in the description, I'm sure. So, uh, if you're pretty new to guitar, or even if you're experienced, the way I would pick that out is the bass notes. So, uh, let's do the bass notes of that. Let's do it like on one string. We'll just kind of have some fun. I think I'm going to do a little series on this chord progression. Let's say we played on uh, the sixth string. Tenth fret, D. Fifth fret, A. Seventh fret, B. Second fret, F sharp. Third fret, G. Tenth fret, D. Third fret, G. Fifth fret, A. Let's do that again. Ten. Five. Seven. Two, three, ten, three, five. Got an idea. I mean, there's so many things you can do with this. Let's add the third interval. So we're going to start constructing a chord. That would be like the bare bones of the chord progression. Now we're going to uh, add. A, so remember, a chord is a basic chord is made of a root, third, and a fifth. If it's major, it's a root, major third, fifth. If it's minor, it's a root, flatted third, fifth. Okay, that's, I don't mean to lose anybody here, but that's kind of like uh, one plus one is two, stuff like that. And it's not that, you know, we can backtrack on that if we need to. If you have questions, let me know what that means. But let's just hear it. So, Trust me, this is, I'm not lying here. This is like a root and a third. Sometimes you just gotta go, okay, that's what it is. So a D, root, and a third. You'll hear it. So I think hearing it's better than sometimes talking about it. Or get your hands on your guitar and feel it. So that's a 10 and nine. A D plus an F sharp. sixth string and fifth string. Then I'm gonna, gonna, so that's a major chord. And we're going to do majors and minors. So here's a, a D major, then A major, which is five and four. Same shape. Okay, now we're going to do a minor. The shape is going to be different. It's going to be a B. And I think you're going to learn something here. If you don't know what I mean about thirds and stuff and minor thirds, let's make it a B major, which is incorrect. You know, like, what? That sounds messed up. But if I flat the third, the note on the fifth string, sixth fret, flat it, I'm going to take it one fret that way, then it's a minor chord and it's correct for the chord progression. So that's a five or a seven and a five. So let me start over. I'm gonna go D major, A major, B minor. Cool. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do F sharp minor, which is second fret. Let me make it major, I'll do it incorrect. You know, like, what? But if we, f that's a root and a major third. I'm going to flat that third, make it minor, and it's going to sound correct. So it's a 2 and an open A, F sharp and A. Let me start over. You're going to start hearing this. So play along. D major, A major, B minor, F sharp minor, here's G major. Okay, so that's a major, a root, and a major third, a 3 and a two, that's a, a root and a third, a G and a B, that's major. Okay, so let's start over. D major, A major, this is fun, huh? B minor, F sharp minor, G 
major back to D major, the 10th fret. G major again, 3 and 2, then an A major, which is 5 and 4. An A plus a C sharp, that's an A major chord. Well, it's almost a chord. It's just a root and a third. To make a proper major or minor chord, we need a root, third, fifth. But we're leaving something out, and you can do that. You can leave out the fifth. Because the fifth is kind of like always there, and it's sort of implied. Uh, you know, we could assume, you can you're, you mentally fill in that the fifth is not there. And this sounds cool as a root and a third. It just sounds good. Um, so sometimes playing less is better than playing the full giant orchestra, you know. So sometimes just one guitar is better than an orchestra blowing your head off, you know. It's just like, hey, just simple, clear, not cluttered. So let me do that. Well, maybe we'll get a metronome going just to kind of keep it tidy here. Hello, metronome. Where are you at? Mode 50. Uh, we'll go about 62. Yeah. Here I go. Two. Ready. Go. D major. A major. B minor. F sharp minor. So I got a little uh, adventuresome and started adding an open D string just to see what would happen. And it worked with some of the chords pretty nicely. Some of the notes, it, it kind of vibrated like the A. Sounds like a Def Leppard song or something. It works with a D chord because it's a D string. The A sounds a little, <laughs> and the B, we already got a D there, so that, you know, just adds a little resonance. The F sharp, that's kind of sticks out, it's, it's cool. The G, of course it works. part of a G chord. The D and the G. And the A. So that's dissonant, but it resolves. You can kind of hear it vibrating, kind of. Hear, 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 like the the notes are kind of like the frequencies are colliding against each other. They're just like slamming against each other. Here, going like doo -doo 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 -doo. dissonant, but there's a reason for that. 
or there's a purpose where it will that that kind of unresolved sound which those those frequencies colliding it's kind of violently beating against each other and you're like what's happening and then you take it back to D it resolves so dissonance to consonants Once you resolve, you kind of forget about those kind of harsh uh, sounds, which I find interesting. Some people will react to that and have, you know, they can't handle it. That not everything, not everything is... Not everything is kind of like, you know, a, a nursery rhyme. Some things are dissonant. And uh, you have clashes, which you can use as an element in your music to make it a little more vibrant and interesting. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? So that's a chord progression. It's one of the most perfect chord progressions that I can think of. Very fun to practice. So, you know, maybe I'll do some other videos like, uh, you know, regular cowboy campfire chords. You can do that too bar chords. Or soloing. Oh boy. <laughs> Really takes me a second to think about that but if I repeat it I'll get my pattern down but I mean you can like you can do page after page of ideas like that based on that chord progression of arpeggios which I prefer that kind of study versus like let's say you're playing this chord progression and, and your your friend's gonna solo and he knows like a D blues scale he's going It's gonna sound kind of raunchy against it could be kind of cool for a second <laughs> but it's gonna sound a little out of place but by targeting those arpeggios you know uh, which let's see I'll do it like a little simpler like Something like that would be it's a little tight you know but at least it teaches you uh, you know how to target your uh, your your soloing ideas to hit notes that are gonna blend right in with the chords you could do a single let's say you had like a Les Paul going through a Marshall with a fuzz pedal and an echo and a wah wah you could go like was kind of following a, a melody idea based on the chords so remember the chord is made of a root third and fifth I was just hitting roots thirds and fifths there and I kind of do it by instinct because I train on those stupid arpeggios for so many years that it just sort of sets me up for uh, being able to not have to I didn't have to think at all I could just instinctively find those notes so I always you know, try to get my students, let's work on arpeggios. And people, you know, the students are like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. And, and I give them arpeggios to work on. And they're like, I'm like, hey, did you work on your arpeggio? And they're like, what's that? Like, remember that thing I gave you last week to do? And they're like, yeah, I want to do, uh, you know, I want to do a Nirvana song. Okay, let's do a Nirvana song. But 
you should be doing those arpeggios. You know, how do I chase everybody down and, uh, you know, knock on your door? Don't, you know, knock, knock, knock. Arpeggio check. You know, it's kind of up to you. If you're taking guitar lessons, your teacher says, I would really, I strongly recommend you practice arpeggios and you just blow off the teacher. I mean, you know, that's kind of what I'm used to. And that's what I practice. I practice arpeggios along with songs and scales and chords and rhythms and timing and harmony and uh, songs and songwriting. You know, I try to do a lot of different things, but arpeggio is a big, big, massive part of how I can uh, improvise over a chord progression and not just be a goofball uh, slobbering through a scale, you know. It's like more targeted, so it's not just, uh, you know. I mean, when you play a scale, you're going to hit some notes that are going to sound pretty good, and that's a good start. But with the arpeggio, you control. So you hit the right note at the right time that it sounds in tune and it, sound, it makes more sense when you do arpeggios. Anyhow, we'll get around to that. Well, maybe we'll do some arpeggios and things, but I think this is a cool idea. And, and if, you're, if you get one thing out of it, just get that, that bass line. Mm, that's how I used to learn you know, playing along with the radio back in the disco days, I'd like turn on the radio and get my guitar and just follow the bass line. You know, I didn't really know the rest of the chord, but eventually I filled in more, more harmony. really building an arpeggio of each chord just by getting the correct third, you know, major third, major third, minor third, minor third, major third, major third, major third, major third. Remember the difference between a major and minor chord. Let me just do an E major. This is the third on the third string first fret G sharp. E major. Yay! Now I'm going to flatten that third. It's going to go that way. It's going to go flat lower. Oh. So see how powerful it is when you control major third, minor third. Oh. It really takes the mood, you know, darkens the mood of the chord. And that's a tool that you need to be able to control versus just randomly, look, I'm strumming chords. Yay. Okay, cool. Get, get to that point and then start thinking about the thirds. That would be one of the big, you know, when you, people talk about music theory, you know, it's easy to be intimidated by that. Like, well, I, I don't know music theory. I don't understand. That's, to me, that is music theory that you can use if you play in a band or you're playing songs or uh, writing songs by controlling the third, if it's major or minor. It's just kind of a, it's like major, the lights are on, minor, the lights are off. Major is daytime, bright, you know, yellow, pink, blue, green. Uh, minor is nighttime, like a dark purple or a brown or a black color, just kind of moody dark. You know, it's, and basically you're just painting, painting pictures with sound. And that's kind of your paintbrush or your tool or your paint, you know, major or minor. All right. And that's what this chord progression might help you here. So get your hands on your guitar. Try that. 10, 5, 7, 2, 3, 10, 3, 5, if you like. Okay. The incredibly strange but true story of the origin of the world's first guitar creature. Man, I like Tubes. Weird and twisted diabolical thrills. Arg! Killer riff monster. Yeah. Fuzz. Dig it. Rock out!